Hello, here is an FNA of a left submandibular gland mass. And at this magnification, we can see that there are a lot of these metachromatic balls of stromal material. And in between the balls, we can see some cells. At higher magnification, we can also see that in addition to these large stromal balls, there are also these uh, branching stromal cylinders. And we can see more clearly the cellular components in the background. Many of the nuclei appear to be quite oval. There is a wide variation in size of the stromal balls. Many of them are actually very large. And here we can see small to medium sized to larger stromal balls and a hint of cylinder formation. And again here, very striking stroma. The cells are actually not really seen to melt or blend into the stroma as they do in pleomorphic adenoma. Instead, they sort of respect the boundaries of the stroma quite well. We do see some cells here, but these are on different planes. And the nuclei are very uh, monotonous looking, very uniform. And the nuclear membranes are fairly smooth. And again here, very nice cylinders of stroma. So the very striking thing about this tumor at low magnification is the abundance of stroma and uh, the size of the stromal balls. Over here, we are looking more at the cellular component, the epithelial or myoepithelial component, where the nuclei are round to oval. Uh, they're fairly small, they're very uniform. Many of the cells appear to be as bare nuclei without discernible cytoplasm. This is another differentiating feature from pleomorphic adenoma. On the alcohol-fixed papanicolaou stain smears, again, we can see these very large stromal balls. They can be a little bit difficult to appreciate sometimes. Uh, many of them are actually almost colorless. They are pale bluish or grayish. So this is a higher magnification picture, and we can see how well the epithelial cells respect uh, the stroma. The epithelial cells, again, appear fairly monotonous with a very oval nuclei. Uh, we don't see marked variation in nuclear size or shape, and there is no evidence of necrosis, and we don't see any definite uh, mitosis in most areas. Here again, we see the interplay between the epithelial cells or myoepithelial cells and the stroma. And here is a high magnification view of the epithelial cells. Some of them have got a small amount of a very delicate pale cytoplasm. And if you look carefully, a few of them have small nucleoli. But other than that, they look fairly bland. So a quick recap, we have here an example of adenoid cystic carcinoma with a very classical appearance of these large, variably sized stromal balls and cylinders and quite uniform ovoid nuclei which are either placed in between these stromal balls or in the background, often as naked nuclei. And this is in contrast to pleomorphic adenoma because the stromal component in pleomorphic adenoma is usually more fibrillary instead of forming these large stromal balls. And also the epithelial cell component in pleomorphic adenoma tends to blend into the stroma as opposed to here, where you can see that the cells are quite separate from the stroma. And a third feature is that you often see these bare nuclei in adenoid cystic carcinoma in the background, whereas in pleomorphic adenoma, the cells in the background usually have intact cytoplasm and some have a plasma cytoid appearance.